Hi, and welcome to another video of The Foodie Geek. So, here's a question. Does any one of you have a laptop you want to improve the gaming performance of, even at the cost of mobility? Or simply an old laptop you don't use anymore because it can't run the apps and games you want? Well, this video is for you because in this episode, I'll be showing you how to connect a desktop GPU or video card to your laptop. Disclaimer. Although this project worked for me, there is no guarantee that it will work for you as well. There are a hundred ways things can go wrong, such as incompatibilities and or defects on both the hardware and software you have. So do this at your own risk. I will not be responsible nor be held liable if your attempt in replicating this project suddenly blows up your house. Good luck. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's see first the list of things you'll be needing. Number 1. A laptop with an easy-to-access PCIe port. If you don't know what that is, you can check your machine's manual or just look it up on YouTube like I did. The PCIe slot is usually taken by the wireless LAN card. Basically, we're taking away the Wi-Fi capability of your lappy, so better to have a backup Wi-Fi USB if you want to surf the net while using the external GPU. Number 2. You're gonna need The Beast. Yes, that's its name. Although its full name is EXP JDC The Beast. This will be the Moses that will let your desktop GPU cross the impossible red sea that leads to your laptop. You can buy this online and have it delivered to your place like I did. I got one from Lazada for about 2 to 3,000 pesos and it got delivered from China to my place around after a week. Number 3. The muscle that will add performance to your machine, which is the GPU or video card. I didn't want to use my GTX 1060 because I wanted the external GPU dock to be its own thing. So I just bought a used GTX 560 for around 2,000 pesos. Considering its release price of 10,000 pesos 7 years ago, I'd say it's a good buy. Number 4 and lastly, a true rated power supply unit. This will provide power to run both the dock and GPU. Any kind will do since you won't be needing that much power anyway. 200 watts and above is recommended. Now we go to assembly. First we put the GPU onto the dock. Then we connect the power supply to both with the dock connecting to a 20-pin ATX and 4-pin ATX P4 connector. While the GPU connects to a 6-pin PCI Express connector. And lastly, we connect the HDMI from the dock to the laptop's PCIe slot. And then we're all set. Next is the software side of things and we'll be installing it into Windows. Before anything, take note, this is crucial. If your laptop has a dedicated graphics card, well, to know if your lappy has one, it's usually identified with the separate NVIDIA or Radeon GPU in the laptop specs. So if your laptop has a dedicated graphics card, you will need to disable it first in the BIOS. I don't know how to go into your laptop's BIOS because it depends per brand. But here's mine. And here I go changing it from switching GPUs to just using integrated. Also, if your dedicated graphics card in the laptop is the same brand as the desktop GPU you're gonna use, then it's best to uninstall your laptop's GPU's drivers first. To have a clean uninstallation, it's recommended to use the DU or Display Driver Uninstaller. It's for free and you can just look it up on Google. Now we can finally install the card's latest driver. You can do this by going to the official website of the brand of the card and searching for the driver there. In my case, I went to NVIDIA's site and what's nice about NVIDIA is that they have a very user-friendly interface when it comes to looking for the right driver. So I was able to get V391.35 for desktop, Windows 10, 64-bit, international. If everything's going well, Windows should detect your external GPU and install the drivers. There is one problem I encountered here. I could get the external GPU to work, but only by connecting a monitor to said GPU. It just doesn't work when I use the laptop screen. I mean, the screen works, but it just doesn't utilize the external GPU when gaming. I'm not sure if I overlooked a part of the procedure or it just doesn't work on my laptop. But if there's anyone who knows how to resolve this, please advise in the comment section down below. Thank you. Okay, so from here on out, we'll be using an external monitor. 
The procedure has been done. And aside it needing an external monitor, it's a success. My money did not go to waste, thank God. But now comes the real fight. Just how much performance boost did my laptop get? To determine the numbers, we must first look at the laptop's dedicated GPU and the external GPU side by side. My old 2013 laptop is equipped with a GT640M and the desktop GPU we're using is a GTX 560. Looking at the data here at userbenchmark.com, we can summarize that the GTX 560 is 150% better than the GT640M. This is in terms of effective speed, average user bench, as well as peak overclock bench. Dragons aside, we can safely say in theory that gaming performance should double with the GTX 560. To test out these numbers, we'll be trying out a couple of benchmarks and games and then compare their FPS side by side. After using 3 benchmark applications and 4 games, we have the following results. For the GT640M, we have an average FPS of 25.5 frames per second, while the GTX 560 has a significantly better 56.2 frames per second. Overall, if we base the computation on the data we got, the GTX 560 boosted the laptop's performance to about 120% more. With this, it'll be a pain to move your laptop around, but in exchange for mobility, you get a better gaming machine. P.S. If you're using GeForce GTX 10 series like the 1060, 1070, or even 1080, the newer drivers don't work, so you'll need to use old ones. Version 376.33 work for other people, so you can try that. Unfortunately, if you have the 1050, don't bother, because it's incompatible. Anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something from today's episode. And please like the video if you do like it, dislike if you don't, and subscribe to get the latest updates from the Foodie Geek. This is Chad, and thanks for watching.